Wind. Rain. New friends. Today we arrive at U Camp 23. Good morning. It's time for us to pack up and head out from Western Maryland onto Ohio. Um, the news of the day is that the ant problem is, seems to be diminishing. We put the ant traps out and it seems that there are fewer ants uh, around the traps and it looks like it's working. So we'll see how that goes. The forecast for the ants, good. The forecast for Sugar Creek, Ohio, eh, questionable. We'll see what it is when we get there. Buckling up for a long drive down the highway usually includes listening to a lot of music, making a few needed stops to empty, well, shall we say, personal tanks, and definitely trying not to doze off as the seemingly mindless miles roll by. Sometimes things catch our attention, you know, weather, crazy drivers, signs, landmarks. Often on the interstates, we don't realize the significance of places we're passing through. The United States is a big country. It's been around long enough that it's almost guaranteed that an event of interest has taken place under and around the multi-lanes of highway. Today's route on I-68 and I-79 bypasses the Pennsylvania Turnpike interruption of I-70. Overall, I-70 covers 2,171 miles between Baltimore, Maryland and Cofort, Utah. That's a pretty diverse route. I-70 was the last of the vast, originally planned interstate highway system to be completed when it stretched through Glenwood Canyon in Colorado was completed in 1992. Also in Colorado, it includes the Eisenhower Tunnel, the highest point on the interstate highway system at 11,158 feet above sea level. We're nowhere close to that, so we're going to pull off for a short break for some lunch. This Pennsylvania Welcome Center on I-79 North is a personal favorite. It's simple, always very clean, easy in and out. It even has a coal miner's display inside, if you happen to be interested in that. Dark clouds are appearing. It's time to hit the road. I-70 is rejoined at Washington, Pennsylvania. The interstate uneventfully flows through the mountains of western Maryland, Pennsylvania, and into West Virginia. Instead of the bypass, I'm taking the wheeling side of the highway split today. We're closely tracing U.S. Route 40, which evolved from the old National Road. That was built between 1811 and 1834 to reach the Western settlements. Just imagine how travel through this very place was different in the 1800s. For one thing, those people couldn't imagine moving at 70 miles an hour non-stop while towing a modern-day version of their covered wagons. But just the rain alone that we're driving through could have temporarily stopped them in their tracks for days. The 
east-west I-70 intersects the north-south I-77. You would never know it by just driving the exit ramps between the two that this intersection is thought, at least at one time, to be the largest in the world at over 300 acres or 120 hectares. Do you think Ohio might just cash in on some lucrative land development here at some point? Just saying. I-77 covers 613 miles from Cleveland, Ohio to Casey, South Carolina, just past the state capital, Columbia. Completed in 1995, it essentially supplants the old U.S. Route 21 built in 1926. Relentless rain continues as we approach Sugar Creek and U Camp 23. Bricks galore! You have never seen so many bricks until you've come to Sugar Creek. Ready for the big reveal, over the hill, and here it is. Wow, there are a lot of campers that have already arrived. Parked up front last year, this year it's all the way in the back. I'm thinking with cool weather that's better than being under a big tree during a rough storm. Been there, done that, you can check out last year's video. It's a wet setup, but at least water and electric hookups are as close as they ever could be. New for this year, elk are at the adjacent farm and we're next to the fence. The welcoming committee has arrived. Number 12 is by far the most interested in us and would be the one that would always come back to the fence throughout the week. The arrivals keep coming as the tab sits at the end of the road. Most trailers are towed by trucks, but it seems I'm not the only one who has taken a slightly different approach. Here's a Tesla. And a BMW. Nice. And there's the luxury fleet of limo golf carts. Day one is mostly registration. Hundreds of campers are here from all over the U.S., Canada, and one certain U.S. territory. We all share well-filtered water. Let's do the unboxing of the U Camp goodie bag. Let's see what we have inside. Nice front pouch. Nice side pouch. And the main event. Oh, yes. We have the awesome U Camp t shirt. The 
the awesome U Camp mug. This will really come in handy too. With a nice lid so I don't spill something on the t-shirt, which I usually do. The U Camp sticker. Very nice. Time for a quick trip into town. Having seen Sugar Creek last year, it's very nice, a lot shown in last year's video, but this venture is mostly utilitarian, bulking up on food. This store has everything, it's one of the most colorful places I've seen. Quantity, variety, not the usual grocery store I'm used to. This seems a bit of a conundrum. Amish and microwave. You can explain that one to me in the comments below, please. Amish country donuts. Yes, some of those are coming to U-Camp a little later. While it's windy and gray, at least the rain has stopped. Yeah, famous last words. I'm skipping several of the seminars for this U Camp, and instead, I'm going to work on some mods. Being a good day to spend inside, I'm installing adjustable shelves. I previously measured, cut, and stained my wood. No Amish craftsman, but this will work out just fine. Ha, <laughs> got it level. The weather is leveling some as well. The only other event on the first day's schedule is wine and cheese. Thank you, please. That 
that's not some kind of misty effect I'm trying to use. Yeah, I smudged the lens with, yeah, wine and cheese. I know. No sleeping late today. It's breakfast followed by a Tab 400 Tech Talk. There's a new barefoot model. It's always good to reinforce what I know and pick up some new tips along the way, on a full stomach of course. Plenty of questions asked and answered. Questions asked and answered. The wind is kicking up again, but we'll brave it for the group photo. All right, everybody, we are getting ready for the group photo. So, we are going to ask everybody to get in multiple rows. Um, please don't be back behind the wing of my entrance, because otherwise we might not see you. We're going to get the drone up and back a little ways to where we will have a pretty wide angle shot. Look at me, I see there's something in those waivers that you signed upon uh, registration that uh, the liability that we have if you get hit by a car. We can pretty much extend. How far do you want to go? It's creepy to look at that thing. Woo! Lots of scheduled work is being done during UCAMP. While the experts do the big work, I'll tackle another small mod. Today's project will be to put screening in the vents. These vents are open to the inside, which is fine, but bugs can get in here pretty easily. And so what I'm gonna do is take the vent panel off and put screen behind it so that the bugs can't get inside. These just come right off 
as you see, they're wide open and that's what's inside. I thought we were done with the rain. Well, now I don't feel so bad about being inside working on arts and crafts. With a choice of tonight or tomorrow to hear about lithium batteries, well, because it's raining, tonight wins. We appreciate everybody's attendance. And uh, we, Josh and I were here last year. It is uh, quite a bit different than last year we were here with last year having heat and humidity and high winds and down trees and no power. power. And this year is very different. Maybe tomorrow will be different from last year and clear. But with UCAMP's infamous weather past, maybe not. Stay tuned.